welcome to our anniversary gala and Vanguard Awards. And what a spectacular location. Thank you, HBO and Mike Lombardo. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you, HBO. Thank you, Billy and his team. What a wonderful evening. And I can't imagine a more fabulous place to celebrate the center's 47 years of service to our community and to take stock of our movement. There is so much going on in the world these days, I barely know where to start. Usually, our gala is right after the election. But this year, we still have six weeks to go. Should we talk a little politics? I don't know if I can bear it. Maybe later. But first, I want to talk about the most exciting and stressful center thing in my life. Our new 137,000 square foot Anita May Rosenstein campus. For years, we have been planning this major expansion that will help us do so much more life-saving work and make our city better, especially for two of the most vulnerable parts of our community, homeless youth and low-income seniors. We're in the midst of a $40 million capital campaign to raise money to help us pay for this campus. And so far, in cash and pledges, ranging from $1,000 to $7 million, we have raised more than $32 million. <laughs> the amazing philanthropists who have made these commitments are visionaries. They are setting a powerful example of what it means to give back in a way that will make a truly lasting difference. Now, you saw their names on the screens earlier this evening, but I would like to acknowledge those who are with us here tonight. If you have already made a capital campaign commitment, please stand up. Let's turn on these lights so we can all see who our folks are. Stand up if you've made a commitment. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope many more of you will join these generous leaders. We need you. A project like this also needs the support of city leaders, and I'm proud that we have it. I especially want to thank a man tonight who has become a champion of this project and whose staff have been enormously helpful. A first-time member of the City Council who told me that he has adopted our project as his own. His office even made a $50,000 donation and his leadership is crucial to our success. Let's hear it for Council Member David Rue. David's standing right back there. All right. You can see him waving. There we go. With Council Member Rue's help, we are working to get our entitlements before the end of the year so that we can break ground and be on schedule to secure key tax credit funding that is crucial to the project. I want to show you some renderings. You might have seen the model, but I want to show you a couple of pictures. So I can't see the slides. Is, are they up? Okay, the first one is the view along the north side of Santa Monica Boulevard. The second one is the view from across the street of our village location. So pretty cool, huh? While we're making history with our new campus, our movement continues to make historic progress. At last year's gala, we were celebrating a record-breaking year, marriage, 
an openly gay Secretary of the Army, unprecedented transgender visibility. Our decades of hard work were paying off as never before. Then came 2016, a year of continued triumphs, but also setbacks and the heartbreak of Orlando. Thankfully, the victories have been many. Just a few examples. Transgender people can now serve openly in the military. Thanks to new Affordable Care Act protections, LGBT people can no longer be denied insurance coverage or medically necessary care because of who they are. Plus, the uninsured rate for our population has begun to decline. And here in California, that is due in part because your center got the statewide contract to enroll our community. The United Nations Human Rights Council appointed its first independent expert to fight discrimination and violence based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Now this is long overdue, given that 74 countries still criminalize homosexuality, and 13 of them, homosexuality or bisexuality, is punishable by death. So this UN report is significant progress. In Congress, the Equality Act was introduced. Finally, a comprehensive approach to non-discrimination protections for LGBT people. But as long as right-wing conservatives are in control of Congress, that's not going to go anywhere. And the Navy is naming a ship after Harvey Milk. But we've also faced enormous backlash. This year has seen a dramatic rise in state efforts to limit and even reverse LGBT rights. Last session alone, over 200 pieces of anti-LGBT legislation were introduced in 35 states. Most of these push the false narrative that LGBT rights are incompatible with religious freedom, allowing all kinds of insidious discrimination under the guise of religion. An increasing number of these are anti-transgender bathroom bills. But many went much further, denying transgender people equal rights and effectively legislating them out of public life. Others denied LGBT people the right to adopt or be foster parents permitted medical professionals to deny us treatment and allowed colleges to be exempt from treating LGBT students equally and more. Unfortunately, the forces of bigotry succeeded in places like North Carolina, Mississippi, Tennessee. But the good news is that we beat back those forces virtually everywhere else. And this in no small part, due to the unprecedented show of support from both the general public and corporate America, including Hollywood. The best example is the reaction against North Carolina after it passed the horrendous HB2. A reaction that continues to build momentum. Now, perhaps not many North Carolinians were phased when concerts were canceled by the likes of Maroon 5 or Cyndi Lauper. But when the NCAA cancels seven championship events in a state that reveres college athletics, now we're hitting them where it hurts. And it does hurt. UCLA estimates that HB2 could cost the state five billion dollars a year. And still, 
the North Carolina governor defends it. As a result, he is in the re-election fight of his political life. If he's tossed out, imagine the power of that message about the electoral consequences of opposing our equality. Of course, that's not the only election where our rights are at play. We're about to elect a new president, and the stakes are incredibly high for our community. Much to the dismay of fair-minded Republicans, now the Trumpians have hijacked their party. Despite a little pandering, Donald Trump has stated that he will roll back the gains we've made. According to the log cabin Republicans, the new party platform is the most anti-LGBT in history. And if you wonder what Trump really thinks, don't forget that his vice president is the most extreme anti-LGBT pick ever. And just this week, Trump appointed another notorious homophobic crusader as an advisor, Rick Santorum. Clearly, when it comes to our rights, the contrast to the Democrats and Hillary Clinton is crystal clear. Given all of the communities that Trump has offended and threatened, I'm incredulous that the race is so close. It's also astonishing to see that these days, it seems that everything is an LGBT issue. We see it in immigration reform, in the movement for black lives, in Medicaid expansion, and in the fight for criminal justice. We are everywhere. And I believe this wave of momentum cannot be stopped. But it can be delayed, even for generations. And that's what our opponents are attempting. They know we are winning and that most of America is with us. That's why they're doing everything they can to delay and deny our progress. Our jobs as the center and as LGBT people and our allies who care about these issues is to recognize that the fight is not over. We must remain vigilant and involved. We must fight back the attacks, keep building a healthier and stronger community, and work to advance our cause on every front. If Donald Trump is elected, I fear the consequences for our community, our nation, and our world. If Hillary Clinton is elected, at least I know that our community will have many opportunities to build on the remarkable successes we've already achieved. But whatever happens, your center will be here, just as we always have been, through good times and bad. With your help, we will continue our phenomenal work, providing the highest quality HIV and primary medical care in a setting that accepts people for who they are, pulling people out of the depths of addiction and helping them get their lives back, providing a home and education and job skills to LGBT kids whose own families have abandoned them, giving them not only hope, but the skills they need for a safe and happy future. Helping the growing number of LGBT seniors who have no one but the center to care for them, making sure they don't spend their golden years isolated and alone. And fighting for our rights, exposing the truth about the terrible consequences of bigotry and ignorance that our center confronts every single day. And this is just some of what we do. Every day, your center is relentless about building a world where LGBT people thrive. And you 
helped to make it possible. Thank you, and have a terrific evening.